All right, we are live. Welcome, everybody. It is so nice. Welcome back to webinar. I know it's been a long time between drinks. Natalie dared me to do something crazy now that we're back in the studio. So I've got to like, woo, welcome back to webinar. Listen up and all the numbers, jump back on board. But I hope everyone has got their, their champagne poured or had a drink in hand. Cheers, ladies. Cheers. Oh, I'll cheers. probably have to join you a little bit later. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That is perfect. Now let's just have a look. I can see all the numbers jumping on board. That is perfect. Now I miss chatting to you guys. It's been so many crazy times and I kind of felt like um, when we have been chatting and having a lovely little you know, chat on a Friday afternoon, it was a nice way to sort of hear what other people have been going through through and realize that we're not alone in this whole experience. So today we've got um, beautiful Lillian Kalouf from Lillian Kalouf um, Atelier, designer, couture, what, uh, all, all, the, all the above. <laughs> all of the above. Um, amazing Australian fashion designer who is coming to... Oh, is sorry guys. <laughs> I'm, I'm speaking to you live from a kitchen in a hair salon. <laughs> Oh, your hair looks fabulous and that's oh, what matters. We cut it today and we went lighter. You can't quite see it here, but yeah. That's perfect. And she's going to be sharing with us her experience as not only a vet, like as a person in our industry, but also as a bride-to-be who's had her wedding postponed. Um, and we have the wonderful Jessie back from Victoria Park in Queensland. Thank you for coming back and joining us again. Having me, Rachel. Those cheeky Queenslanders, you guys are just a little bit ahead of us. So yeah. I'm, hope, I'm hoping that Jessie can share with us, um, you know, what, what she's been finding and learning as sort of the wedding industry starts to ramp up to that next level back up there and, um, and give us a little bit of feedback in terms of, yeah, getting bookings and giving our couples that confidence to, to rebook and get back into it. But I promise I haven't been slacking off while we've been gone. Um, I'm going to be sharing with you guys um, the launch of the podcast. I'm so stupidly excited by this. You know, when you, you, know, when you put your heart and soul into something and you kind of get a little bit obsessed by it and then it just gets that next level crazy. Well, I'm kind of doing that today. So um, I just, I've always wanted to, to do a podcast and I, I'm someone who doesn't really like fluff. I'm like, right, let's get to the point. I want the information. I want to deliver it fast and then I want to get out of there. So I've created this podcast. Season one is just all about everything that comes after social media. It's all about in turning inquiries into money in the bank. I hate to be so blunt, but who doesn't need money in the bank right now? We, like, <laughs> we all need it. So it's really fun to go on socials and do all that stuff. But this is all, this um, series of the, the podcast is, is all about how do you convert that DM, that inquiry, that lead into a real and genuine um, booking? All the steps that we do in following up inquiries, creating an emotional sale. We're back in the studio, which is fantastic to see. Um, and I'm going to be sharing with that with you guys at the end. All right. Now, let me just get my little chat function open. We have got the Q&A open here today. Um, and I've got some $50 vouchers from Amazon that I'm going to give away. Um, so if you guys, if you have a look over here in your chat function, if you've used Zoom before, where it says two, make sure you've got all panellists and attendees clicked. And then when you pop in your answer, um, we'll be able to see that. And the first person to reply, you guys are going to have to help me out. Sometimes my eyes don't work fast enough. And the first person to reply is going to get a $50 Amazon voucher. Okay. So let's do a boy's name starting with D. Hey, Fiona. Oh, Glenn McKay. Oh, one of our past webinar um, panellists. Excellent. Dean, excellent to answer too. That's my husband's name. Double bonus Sorry, points honey, for am that. I supposed to respond back in, into the chat? No, you don't oh. have to respond at all, darling. All good. All good. This is just for to, and I'm going to give these guys away a $50 voucher. Perfect. All right. Um, who can tell me what I'm going to be releasing at the end of this webinar? Podcast, very good, Selena. Oh my God, you're cheeky. Beautiful. We've got Selena who's getting a $50 voucher. And let's do one more. Name a colour beginning with Y. Mm -hmm. Who's got fast fingers? Oh, Glenn, you can't win two. Okay, who have I got there? <laughs> <laughs> Natalie. <laughs> Natalie with the $50 gift voucher. That's fantastic. Okay, let's get straight into it then. Now, so today, um, 
as I said, Jesse, you guys are one step ahead of us um, in Queensland. And guys, I should say as well, the reason I wanted us to start using that question and answer panel was so that um, you guys know that it's there, you're getting right into it. If you've got any questions, just chuck them in there as we go along too. Um, what are you finding? Or tell us what level your restrictions up to now? What's your experience going in Queensland? Sure, sure. So we're at stage three in Queensland at the moment, which allows us to have uh, one person per four square metres. Um, so we have five venues on site that we can still host uh, weddings at. And uh, we've had five weddings already since stage three and we've got three on this weekend. So, which is really exciting. Um, I guess the restrictions, the big restrictions that Glenn will probably ask a question about is um, dance floors. We've got a on dancing as I think everybody does Australia wide. So you're able to have a, a, your bride and groom or your groom and groom dance and your parents dance and that's it. Um, uh, cocktail style weddings, um, there is a restriction on it. However, we are big enough that we can provide furniture in all of the rooms. So we're still able to host those weddings. Um, and just entertainment, so photo booth props, we can't do props. So anything that's got sanitary, like sanitization, group handling, we can't do. So yeah. I've got um, something I set up earlier here, that's a ceremony set there, social distance for wow. you. Wow. You're always, um, we, we, we've got wet weather in Queensland one day in a million, but it's raining today. Um, and yeah, so this is a wet weather option for a, a wedding we've got on tomorrow. And I know that um, when we spoke last time, um, you were giving us a lot of information about postponements, what your policies were, um, you were postponing everything and, and offering refunds at that stage. Is that still the same? And can like, where do you draw the line at a COVID postponement and a postponement that doesn't really count as COVID? I think, I think the answer and the reason that we've been so successful in that um, area is we've been fluid with um, the restrictions as they come into play. So um, if there is a real reason that somebody can't have their wedding and it is COVID related, we take it on board and we're offering postponements for all weddings this year to next year. Right. Um, Refunds are, you know, done within one month of the wedding. If they can't actually do their wedding due to COVID, we will give a full refund, which is something that, um, you know, we're really proud to offer as well. You know, people, it's not our fault that COVID's hit. It's not uh, the bride and groom's fault that COVID's hit also. But to answer your question, our inquiries for weddings is through the roof. People are really interested in getting married at the moment. They don't have much else going on. So we're really, really, really busy with weddings. And we've already um, surpassed last year's weddings oh, with wow. for 2020-2021 financial year. So we've already got 150 on the books. That's fantastic. Um, and are you finding that you've got the inquiries coming in the door? Are they booking or are they sort of uh, feeling a little bit uncertain? Oh. There's both. There's both. There's people that have got time to shop. Absolutely. There's there's people that are going around and shopping for the best price. And then you've got really savvy couples that know that they're getting a really good price. They're coming in and booking uh, now for two months time. Um, ah. We had two weeks ago come in on a Monday for Friday. So wow. we actually, yeah, we, we can turn around short leave weddings as well. So there's a real mixture, but um, the majority of our people are really genuine. And oh, that's good. Yeah. And they're booking. That's awesome. Yeah. Now, Lillian, you, you do have the unique perspective of being a bride who's been post is going through postponement stage herself and a designer who also has business issues that you need to keep surviving. T tell me about your story to now. What's, how's your journey going? Um, look, it's been quite interesting. I feel like we've been on this long roller coaster ride, but um, look, it's looking a little bit more promising now. So initially when we shut down for isolation it was quite confronting and as the business owner and especially working in a very slow paced fashion industry where everything is customized and made very like it's very well made it's Australian made I panicked because I wasn't sure what what we would have to do in terms of the deadlines, not having employees come in and finish off these outfits for brides. So that was quite challenging. And then obviously, you know, receiving all these phone calls from all these panicked brides, explaining to us that, you know, I don't know what to do. Can I please put my dress on hold? I'm going to most likely um, 
postpone my wedding to next year? What, 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 what happens to my dress? Are you able to hold it? Are you going to force me to pick it up? And it was just so overwhelming that I just honestly had no answers initially. So I had to yep. sit there and marinate in my thoughts and work out new ways and processes to kind of deal with it. And obviously what I started to do initially was because everything was so unknown, we weren't quite sure how long it was going to go on for. I would, I made a list of, you know, my brides from like most recent to the latest and checked in literally every two to three weeks with each one individually. Um, you know, I was calling about 60 to 80 custom clients, like every two to three weeks, just Fantastic. checking in, making sure they're okay. And funny to say, I knew these clients, but I felt during that process, I developed a really good relationship with them. I was happy to listen to them. And then the girls would always flip the question on me. So what's happening with your wedding? Is it still happening? Like, how are you dealing with it all? And it, it was just a really nice conversation to have with them and just kind of have that relation and that we can both relate to each other. Initially, obviously my wedding was still going because it wasn't until November. So I was just like, you know, we'll be over and done with it by then. I'm, um, you know, not knowing what to expect, but um, I felt that played a really important role in, in dealing with the situation with the bride. And then we just, we did make it formal once obviously the dates were locked in, the postponed dates were locked in. We'd make them obviously email us, you know, on paper that they're, weddings have been postponed so that we can set new scheduled dates for the process of their dresses. Um, yeah. No, that's good. That's and um, because it's interesting, I, I did a, a webinar this morning uh, with Easy Weddings and it was, um, it was really quite funny um, how many people had questions around policies and, and, you know, what to include in your contract and, um, how much information to give. And it was really interesting. I kept coming, finding myself coming back to the fact that, look, we've been in business for 18 years. We went through the GFC. We've been through really tough times before. Your brand and who you are as a company and the goodwill that your business builds up is so, so important. And, you know, developing bad will and having people say, you know, not positive things about you can be so much more detrimental to your business than just doing a few refunds and taking that short-term hit rather than enforcing um, policies and saying, well, you signed and, and being, you know, inflexible. We've done a lot of negotiation through this time and said, well, if you can work with us in this way, then we'd be happy yeah. to work with you in another way. Just yeah, great. Um, now, um, Jesse, I saw as well on your Facebook, it made me very, very envious. You did an in-person event. Yes. Um, where basically it was like a wedding open day and it was held at night and everyone got to come back in. And um, how did you find that? Were people um, concerned about getting back out there? Is there was there any um, trepidation? Was there anything that, that you think that we could learn? Because we were obviously probably not quite up to that stage yet. Did you have any experiences that maybe we can learn from from when you did host that event? Um, look, we we did a lot of planning for it. So we made sure that our T's were crossed and our dies, I's were dotted. So everything that we showcased at that event was COVID safe. And so yeah. we, were, we were really proud about um, being one of the first industry people to host an event for up to 100 people. Um, we had a number of industry people there as well. And they were like, how did you do this? How did you work around this? What was your interpretation of that? And we all, um, the team here at Victoria Park felt confident confident in our answers and in our ability to host a COVID safe event. So I think um, other people were scared for us. We weren't scared. Um, we we're excited and we've got bookings from it and we were able to support the industry, showcase how to do a COVID safe event and, um, you know, start hosting events and doing what we love. That's perfect. That's really good. And Lillian, I know that you are a social media queen. Um, I had a really funny experience um, in the last couple of days. I had two separate people that I just personally know who, yeah. came, who called me and they said, right, we haven't seen you on socials lately. Are you okay? Just wanted to check in and make sure you're doing okay. <laughs> and I was like, oh yeah, I'm fine. I've just been busy and, and you know, just forgot to do them for a bit. Um, how important do you think that social media presence is and, and how do you use it now to, to build up your business? Honestly, I'm going to put my hand up and say that I'm guilty in the last two weeks. And I did send you a message saying that 
Um, I, the last two weeks have been quite difficult for me on a personal level, obviously not my fiance being stuck in Victoria, me being here, trying to pick up the pieces here, trying to organize everything. And then obviously I had to make the decision to postpone my wedding. So social media was somewhere I didn't want to be for that two weeks. Cause I just felt like there was just so much going on. Yeah. Um, but during isolation, like social media was everything to me because it was my, outlet it was my connection to my brides to my clients there was so much uncertainty about my business because we obviously still do ready to wear and late last year we opened up a retail store on oxford street in paddington so that was like a big step for me and having my first retail store selling ready to wear clothing was always a big dream of mine so unfortunately during that isolation process we had to shut it down permanently. So that was a big deal for me. So having that platform to communicate with our followers and our clientele and also people in the industry that, you know, that had happened, the support was incredible. Oh, beautiful. Um, yeah. And then, you know, we tried to play around, you know, with the content that we posted as well. So my sister and I would obviously put together some outfits and give people some pointers in terms of style and inspiration just to kind of get things moving. And yeah, social media played a massive, massive part in that department as well. So I, I feel like even now moving forward, a lot of these brides that had us in mind, it encouraged them to make bookings with us during isolation, which was quite weird, um, but they did. So they'd book them in advance and, um, you know, they were paying deposits just to see me, which was really nice because we dropped the price of our design session fee as well. Um, yep. For that reason as well, just to accommodate for, for the time. And yeah, it worked really well. It's actually funny. I'm not surprised at all that you got a lot of people booking still during that isolation period because one of the things that I think is so important about social media is developing, um, and you hear me bang on about this all the time, is developing the no like trust factor. So by having your face and who you are, and I think you do that really, really well. I always see you come up on my feed and you're always cool and trendy and, oh my God, who wouldn't <laughs> want to wear the outfits that you're wearing? But you're giving, you're giving your couples um, or your brides a chance to get to, first of all, know who you are by seeing your face and, and getting to know you in person. And then not only knowing you, but then deciding that they like you which yep. is then going to give them, um, as they start to like you, see what you're doing. And you do take people, like you're always photographing in your home or the shop or, you know, yep. you really do feel like they're getting to know you in person as well. So then they can decide that they want to trust you as well. And I've... Well, I'm not going to lie to you. I actually moved into the store upstairs. So we've got yep. an apartment above the atelier and I just couldn't go home. Like I thought... I practically live here. Like if you lock me away from my atelier, I think I'd lose the plot. Yeah. So I pretty much had to make that decision and put a bed in the room and set myself up because it is a fully equipped apartment. And I moved all the dresses out of the way from the, from the consultation room. And I said, this is going to be my new home during isolation. Uh -huh. And I felt because everything was so like at an arm's length, it was so easy for me to kind of build and create that content and to have that, kind of real time um, communication with, with my clientele as well. No, it's, it really is important because then people can literally have a Zoom call and see you in person and then feel that. It's not like they're walking in and they're meeting who you are for the first time. They haven't just seen your dresses. They yeah. feel like they know you. So then it does make it in this sort of more uncertain time much easier to confirm their booking and, and decide they are going to book with you because they feel like they've known you over a longer period of time. I think it's fantastic. Um, now, Jesse, I'm going through my list of questions. I feel really nervous this week. Isn't that funny? <laughs> oh, I've got it just well, to just to... Talking about being personable, our yeah. team wanted the brides to feel comfortable and feel confident in us. So we did a wedding blog. So the wedding oh. team came in and they took um, you on a behind the scenes tour of our Gata Marquee, which the beautiful girls from Beautiful Wedding styled. And we were doing a beautiful Lux photo shoot that day. Oh, with awesome. And it was just, it was so nice. And the girls got dressed up during COVID and they just said, you know, we're here, we love you. Um, call us, talk to us. And that was before we were allowed to do face to face. And I think that really instilled a lot of confidence with our brides. And they're like, oh, I saw Jen or I saw Lauren. And it was just, it was just nice. And it was nice to, um, you know, be together as a team again and show that un unity. That's great too. And something that brides can really relate to, like they'd be looking at that going, oh, wow, that's something that I, you know, that really helps me. That's so cool. So it was good fun. 
Now, once you've done your advertising, so you've done your blogs and things like that, and you've actually got them to the inquiry stage, sure. um, Jess, what would be your maybe top one or two tips in terms, or you can give me any if you like, um, tips in terms of taking the couple from that, that inquiry stage into an actual paying, deposit paying booking that is going to have their wedding with you? Um, so we've got our sales team here. We encourage site inspections straight away. So we're able to do that up here in Queensland at the moment. So we bring them in for a site inspection, show them the space, and it's pretty easy to book and fall in love with the venue once they've come in. Our pricing is really... Um, uh, good so we haven't had to discount I know you asked me that question earlier mm. but we have been offering booking incentives and booking guarantees which I think um, couples are really enjoying um, we sent an EDM out yesterday to our couples saying you know book with that certainty that your money is safe if you can't have your wedding due to COVID restrictions then we will give you your money back and um, here's all the things we're doing and our planners are here and come meet with us and yeah so I mean from inquiry stage our sales team looks after people they pick up the phone they talk them through the concerns and they bring them in and then it's pretty easy close do you know what i love though something that so many um people don't do that you just take as for granted pick up the phone pick up the phone oh my gosh pick up the phone yeah. where i am like this crazy person who wants to like just go shout from the rooftop for god's sake be old like me and pick up the phone like it's, it's really I'm watching right now i say it every day have you picked up the phone did you pick up the phone did you pick, pick up, up the phone yeah because and it always shocks me how many um times when when we do pick up the phone the person that i'm speaking to on the other end goes oh my gosh no one else has called me thank you so much for taking the time to call me and chat you to you know chat me through everything um yep. i think you know maybe powerful. it is power it's so powerful like even so powerful. for myself now because i it's literally where three people standing now in the lillian kaloof company like there's no yep. one everyone else is outsourced yep. and it's actually myself my sister who's a creative director and my business partner and then we've got our main machinist so i don't have an assistant anymore so for years i hadn't picked up the phone and said hello lillian speaking and it's been so refreshing i feel like for myself and for the customer that's inquiring i'm like lillian could live speaking and they're like oh lillian i'm like yeah speaking they're like oh i wasn't expecting you to answer the phone i'm like i'm here for you what would you like and it like you Aww. said so powerful you know even when an email inquiry comes through you see me scrolling to see the number before i even read the email because i just feel when you get them on online, it's a completely different um, process. Like it's it's a guaranteed win. You know, as a saleswoman, to me, it is a guaranteed win. And Diane has been doing the exact same thing. And I just love like flicking through my calendar because we've color coordinated everything. And I'm just seeing design session, design session. <sighs> What's going on? And it's just it's just the power of human to human. You know, like if this period has taught us anything this is the time to connect with people on that level i personally love it for myself like you know even i i'm not sure if everyone knows but i've had to also postpone my wedding and just trying to reach out to my reception in tasmania has been excruciating because you know i'd send an email obviously they're still in hibernation it's not their fault but you know you send an email and it takes five days for the email to come back to you and when you're obviously dealing with different vendors doing different things for your wedding day you want to try and get back to everyone as soon as possible to confirm that they're still available for you. Yeah. So obviously that was a challenge for myself. And that taught me that if a bride contacts me, I need to get onto that in less than 24 hours. Like even if it, you know, pens for five hours, I start to get anxious. I'm like, we could be losing that sale or we could be, you know, we have to be mindful of people's emotions in these times because we're all stressed out. We're all, we all, don't know what the hell's going on. So the best thing that we can provide now is a bit of attention yep. and positivity and just, you know, work with what we have. Absolutely. There's so much about what you said then that I was just obsessing over. For starters, colour coding your diary. Oh my God. It's the best, <laughs> it's the best feeling in the world when, you're yeah. when your diary is full of colour. It's like, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. That's awesome. But I also really, really love the fact that you called yourself a salesperson. Oh my goodness, look, I think it's something that us in the wedding industry, you know, we started the industry because we're so passionate about what we, what we love. You know, we start out becoming a, a photographer or a fashion designer or we get into the industry because we're passionate about what we do. But what's going to make you successful as a business person isn't necessarily going to be just focusing on that. You're going to need to 
flex those other muscles as well. And in the same way that you got really good at being a fashion designer, you've then Absolutely. got to put the same amount of effort into practicing over and over and over again as being a sales person. A lot person. of people don't know that. That's so true. And a lot of people don't know that about creatives. Like, although I'm a fashion designer, I'm amazing at sketching and fitting and coming up with all these incredible ideas. But that's honestly, like, not even 20% of my day. You know, the, the rest of the day or the rest of that experience with me is obviously sales and understanding people and connecting with people on the level of service. And they're coming to me to provide that for them. So they're not just coming to me to sketch up a design and come up with a new concept. No, we're working on it together. So that experience in itself for me is sales. You know, you have to be a really good salesperson. You have to have a good personality. Um, yeah, so that's, this is what you said before. So obviously when people do contact us and inquire, we straight away try and recommend, like obviously we don't do a site visit. So for us, it's like design session, meet Lillian, sit with Lillian, get measured, get to know her so she can get to know you. So for us, that is extremely important right now in terms of the sales process. A hundred percent. And even you were saying every person's process um, from that initial inquiry is different. The, the phrase that I always love, love, love to use is um, to take people on a journey from one step to the next is to say the best next step from here. So rather than saying to them, would you like to come in for a wedding um, meeting in person or would you like to come in for a sketch session? They'll be like, oh, no, I'm not ready. But if you say the best next step from here is to come in and meet your photographer in person to make sure you connect on a personal level and then finish that with a closed ended question. Do you prefer during business hours or after hours? So that way you can really take them on the journey um, of, of being an inquiry and then... Very closed in <laughs> question there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's so many in there. And I uh, just blatant podcast, webcast, that, that tip is in there. Uh, what can I do to get you to sign today? Yeah. <laughs> and I actually, I'm, I'm a very big fan of asking um, couples, you know, are we the right photographer for you? And then if they say, and they'll often say, oh, yeah, I love your work. Okay, just tell me, what is it, what is it that's stopping you? And yeah. then if you can be really open and honest, and um, then they'll often tell you, and that makes the problem really easy to fix. Yeah. yeah. That's beautiful. Now, um, one more question. that the, I've actually added this one again. Um, thank you again, Easy Weddings, for having me on the, the, your webinar this morning. I thought it was really fantastic. What are you guys going to do for future brides um, where if they're, if you've agreed to do the job for a certain amount and between now and then, well, obviously, you know, the, probably the cost of your sales increases. Um, how, Jesse, are you going to be handling that? Obviously, the cost of providing a COVID safe venue is going to increase. Mm -hmm. um, are you passing that cost on to your clients? Are you going, well, look, they've, because I have to admit, for example, um, yes, there are policies and procedures that I can put in place going forward, but for most of my couples, I already said, yes, postpone, yes, postpone, like we did it all so quickly. And yeah. now I'm like, oh, okay, hang on, I'm going to have to honour all this. Are you going to charge your couples any extra? Are you going to wear it? Not. The market's too competitive. Yeah. Um, we're just going to have to wear it, which is going to hurt the bottom line, um, but we're aware of that. We've We've done the figures, we've done the forecasting. Um, people are savvy at the moment. They have time to shop around um, and the numbers need to stay where they are. So yes, people are aware that it's costing us more. They don't care, yeah. so, unfortunately. So we always make a point of saying, um, like when I reference that we're doing cocktail style weddings, we're providing the furniture at no cost to you. We're yep. putting furniture in the room. So Me it is service that we're offering, but um, we can't charge for it in order to retain the business. And we need the business. Absolutely. Mm. And is that what you're doing as well, Lillian? Well, with us, obviously, the dresses are made at a slow pace. So it's always recommended that we set deadlines and work backwards. So I usually work on a 12-week turnaround time in terms of fittings. So obviously, if the bride was getting married this year in May and she's moved it to May next year, she's definitely going to fluctuate. So we're quite well aware of that. We've had to address these things with our brides. So we said, obviously, so because it's a couture custom gown, you're better off putting the dress on hold and then restarting at a later time. So yes, like you said, you know, it just depends in terms of costings. Like I've had to wear so many costs this year. Like we had, you know, six months of, uh, 12 months of brides and now we're trying to finish them all off in six months. And then now they're like, uh-oh, we're going to extend another six months months so it's like it's shifted do you know what I mean and we're like yeah. stop start stop start and I just had to literally 
put my foot down and say, listen, guys, you know, these, you're working with delicate fabrics and you've got human figures that fluctuate on the weekly. So I thought, you know, so we don't, it doesn't incur any more cost. We're better off putting things on hold and then revisiting it at a later time that's closer and more reasonable to your wedding date. And then we just do the final fittings there. But yeah, absolutely not. I'm not going to be charging anyone anything extra, you know, unless they ask for extra. But whatever we've discussed, it is what it is. Absolutely. And it's really interesting that you said that unless they've asked for, for something extra. And this was actually the solution I came up with um, when I was thinking about it this morning was that for those weddings, I, I've always been a big fan of an incremental sale. So where instead of at when they're first booking, trying to get everything across the line, it can be quite a, a, uh, a lot of information to take in. And I'm a big believer that people book you when they feel like you understand them not when they understand every single little detail. And um, so I really want to give them emotionally everything and the best experience that I can. So often I'll, I'll start by just getting the sale and then we'll give them options closer to the date of ways in which they can enhance their package. Yeah. So with it, um, the example this morning was a, a cake maker saying, well, you know, I've got this cake that's booked you know, how, what can I do? My costs are going to go up. And my recommendation was just to start rejigging your packages and come up with a package B that is maybe not, doesn't cost you much more, but offers a lot more value to your couple. Maybe if there's some way in which you can um, offer some element of social media coverage that gets them excited. Or um, mm -hmm. for us, I was thinking we might even do something like add um, extra prints into the package, add extra pages in their album, add a parent album in, but basically stack it up so that, we're going to offer an extra package that gets a little bit more money in, but doesn't cost us, sorry, it gets a lot more money in, but doesn't cost us too much to produce. So mm -hmm. that hopefully we can push them towards that package B and see if we can recoup some of the costs that way. So that's, um, that's definitely a, an area that we're going to have a look at as well. Now, guys, we are um, coming up towards the end here. Um, if you've got any questions for Jesse or Lillian, please feel free to pop them into the chat function on the side. Um, if you've got any questions about, you know, postponement policies or um, how we get uh, bookings across the line, things like that, please feel free to pop them in and we can um, go through and keep answering those questions as well. Um, I think I cut you off before, Jess. Did you have any other um, I'll recommend talk, so don't worry about me. Yeah, good, good. You keep talking. Because <laughs> basically today, I kind of felt as though there's definitely a feeling in the industry where it's hard that people are scared. And yep. got, there's a lot of inquiries out there, but how do we turn that inquiry into a booked wedding? So what's your, what's your suggestion? We're backing ourselves. So we are hosting, and I told you this months ago that we were going to do it and we're doing it. Yay! So, um, we've got wedding open day. Um, yep. We're hosting already 80% booked out for the 13th of September. How amazing. Um, we're hosting menu tastings. So we are hosting events for brides to come along, touch, see, feel, smell, all the things that they want to do. But we're backing ourselves and we're doing it. So they're like, oh, I can't have a, a wedding or I can't have this. Well, we're inviting you to an event. You can do it. Please come and enjoy and, and feel confident in the booking process. So that seems to be working wonders for us at the moment. And then we get to showcase all our favorite people, all the people in the chat. We've got GNF, people weddings. We've got our wedding dress designers when Freddie met Lily. Um, we've got our cars. We've got all sorts of supplies that come along and support us, our cake makers. And it's just, it's just nice. And then Bride's Book, they're our number one, you know, uh, return on investment invest, uh, events, um, menu tastings and open days. Awesome. Perfect. And what about you, Lillian? Are you have got any plans coming up for how you're going to sort of get those, those new bookings across? Ironically, we have been inundated with inquiries. Like I just wow. sat the other day and I'm like, this is really unreal because it wasn't always this much. Um, but I feel like for me, maybe because of my style, um, our actual aesthetic in terms of bridal wear um, has actually become more popular now because the weddings is are more downsized, these girls aren't going for these glamour ball gowns anymore. So I feel like I've been winning a lot of sales and we've had a lot of inquiries for that reason because obviously my bride's a little bit more minimalistic, she's sophisticated, she's not too fussy, she's not about the glam. So for her, when they're having those smaller weddings, it's working out really well for us mm -hmm. because she's coming to us with like a smaller budget for a smaller wedding 
and it's just increased the inquiries at the moment. That's perfect. That's perfect. And it's interesting. Um, we've been getting a lot of inquiries through other, um, exactly like you said, Jess, other venues and vendors in the industry because we have been doing the right thing by our couples. Mm. Um, I really can't, like, uh, as much as we can put policies and procedures in place, I think it's so important to, to keep remembering that our brand and our goodwill is the number one most important priority and, and to really protect that. Absolutely. Um, we had, um, talking about uh, brand and, and reliability, we refunded a bride and groom during COVID um, for COVID reasons. They have booked again and got married last weekend here. Oh, so that's lovely. Their money and then they came back and gave it to us because we did the right thing by them. So, and that's know. funny. We well, had exactly had the same experience. The same yeah, same. Well, we had a, we had two brides that were meant to be getting married earlier on in the year, postponed for later on in the year, and then now they've like literally said we're bringing the wedding forward and I'm going to leave it to you once the dress is ready I'm walking down the aisle so I was just like what and they're like we trust you can do it and I'm like but like you're giving me two weeks notice to finish your dress and they're like I trust you just do it so it's it's just been like and I feel like because obviously we've done that thing with them where we've been able to have those conversations they felt confident you know what what's the point in leaving it to next year if we can just jump in now get it over and done with I can just give Lillian a call and get started again and it's yeah it's kept us on our feet but it's it's a it's an exciting feeling like I missed being at work and missed that rush and it's just it's nice and it's nice to know that they're finally you know fulfilling their dream of getting married they're not letting anything stop them yeah um, yeah, yeah. Oh, that is so cute because we have exactly the same experience and I thought we were lone wolves, you know, like we refunded and then the client came back and booked this again. Yeah. I was, I was shocked. So that, that's really good. I, I just really can't stress enough how, how many um, other suppliers, you know, our reputation is good and they're referring us because they know that they can trust us to take yeah. care of their couples. Um, that one other thing that I would mention as well is that I'm really upfront with our couples in, in, um, in terms of uh, the importance of setting a date. I don't normally... Um, use that as a method of, of a, a reason to book, but I am really stressing at the moment the urgency to, to set your date um, and as a reason to book us in because we do have so many people competing for dates at the moment. So, and it's honest. Like I've had couples who've come in, met their photographer, come back a few days later, and somebody else has moved their wedding, and now that date's gone. So, I'm definitely using that um, urgency of setting a date to help with confirming bookings. Um, and very similar to what Jess was saying too, um, you're showing it in person by having open days and letting them know that it's normal and it's fine to go ahead. I'm actually just saying it. I'm just letting them know and saying, instead of saying, um, you know, a lot of, oh, you should book today. I'm saying a lot of our couples are choosing to book. Yeah. Um, it's normal for you to book. It's usual. Have a look at what else is out Absolutely. there before you come in. Come in and most of our couples choose to book. Um, on the night of their appointment so they don't miss out on their photographer. Just let them know that it's really normal um, and that's what most of, that, uh, most of the couples are doing as opposed to asking them, would you like to book? Mm. Oh, I had the same urgency too. Like when my wedding had to be postponed, everything revolved around my vendor's availability. So yeah. it was so important. And I said, and I kept emailing my venue saying, please, like I don't want to sound like a bridezilla. I work in the industry, but I would really, really appreciate it if you really, if you confirmed my date as soon as possible because I don't want to miss out on my photographer. I don't want to miss out on my makeup artist. Like these people have businesses and obviously I'm not going to, they're not going to hold the date for me for too long. You know what I mean? It's unfair. And although like I work in the industry and a lot of these people are my friends, I would hate to put that on them as well. Do you know what I mean? So I'm quite mindful in that regard as well. And I think, you know, if I could give my brides any advice now as to, you know, if you want your photographer, lock them in as soon as possible. It's so important. Like there is so much involved in that one day. And, mm -hmm. you know, it, for me, it's so important to have all my favorite people there. So I want to lock that in as soon as possible to confirm everybody. That's perfect. I actually, my uh, sister-in-law got married recently and we left booking a hair and makeup artist late. And I was like, ah, so yes, I've experienced firsthand. It's like it's, it's yeah. high pressure getting the date you want. So it is, um, it is. I've got oh. Lynn saying, "Oh yeah, yeah." Sorry, I just saw in the feed Caroline. Um, mm -hmm. Caroline Skylighter just posted our um, Royal Agricultural Show was meant to be on this week. It starts, and she donated the fireworks last night. We were on my. Oh. 
girls upstairs they were on their decks and we're all just so happy to see fireworks and celebrate and say go away COVID but it was so so good Carolyn thank you and she's just said she's got heaps of inquiries from it already so good that work. Is, that's awesome yeah. that is fantastic beautiful well, thank you very much, guys, um, for coming in and sharing, um, you know, all your journeys and your experiences and some real advice that hopefully people can take away. And again, blatant plug, if you would like more advice that you can take away, <laughs> check out the podcast that's uh, being released today. Woo! Very exciting. It's called Wedcast. It's on the, um, Podbean. It's actually currently being approved to be on Spotify and Apple as well. But I'm going to send you guys a link afterwards, of course. Um, but it's called Wedcast. So webinar, the webinar for the wedding industry. Hello, Wedcast, <laughs> the podcast for the wedding industry. I know, creative, right? Awesome. But basically, the whole idea of it is just to, to it's like season one, like this first season, we've released three, the, an introduction and the first three episodes so far. Each episode's less than 15 minutes. We're talking like it's a short, sharp, and then we're focusing on everything that comes after social media. There are amazing people out there who are doing social media. And so many people are doing, you know, their own social media and that's fantastic. But what do you do next? You know, it's great to get an inquiry. It's great to get a DM. These are, you know, the steps that we take to actually turn that DM and inquiry into a booked lead. So some of the topics we'll be chatting about is um, pricing and packaging strategies, how to write pricing, packaging, um, also looking at how to create an experience, how to... Um, do an emotional sale. If you're someone who hates selling, um, we're going to give you some tips on how you can sell without selling by basically educating your couples, um, using emotion and different ways in which you can still educate them on why what you do is so important. Um, and it's going to be a 10 episode series. So the first three released and we're going to be releasing them over the next couple of weeks, the rest of the series. So I invite you guys to please jump on and check it out. And leave a review. Um, hopefully you enjoy it and find it very useful. So you can, uh, when you get all you people in Melbourne, when you get your one hour out and walk the dog. <laughs> oh my gosh. I think Sydney's going to be um, very there very soon as well. We're all living in like fear day to day. But let's do the right thing by each other, guys. <laughs> yes. Masks, everybody. Sydney people. Just celebrate. Market. Let's, let's do it. No, that's fantastic. Thank I think you so much for having me. Yeah, thank you, Rach. Thank you, guys. And um, thank you, everybody, for coming along. Um, lovely comments in there from everybody. Thank you so much, guys. And um, we will be back in touch next week um, and we'll see you for the next webinar. Thank you so awesome. much. See you guys. Have a great weekend. Thanks. Bye. Bye. <laughs>